In today's video, I'm going to show you how to take a normal and a static logo from Adobe Illustrator and then animate it using Adobe After Effects. After Effects allows you to import AI files directly into your projects. Now it's a good practice to organize your Illustrator files first and foremost, and that means labeling the layers with relevant names. It's a good idea to have the text layers in one folder and then the other elements into a different folder. So like in any other Adobe software, we need a document and this is effectively what you see when you do open After Effects. We want to set up the specifications for our edit and this will be your personal preference in the most part, but 1080p is a good size and 25 frames per second is pretty ideal. And of course, full resolution. Now these are my setup numbers that I'm going to be using for today's logo animation. Then it's just a case of dragging and dropping the logo file right into your After Effects comp. So make sure you select import as footage for this kind of project. Drag the AI file onto your comp so that we can see what's going on properly and then right click and then select create convert to layered comp. This turns the Illustrator file into its own pre-comp. So now we can go inside the pre-comp and click on the logo and right click create to create shapes from vector layer. This is going to turn the vector into a path, which means we can now animate this very logo in After Effects. This new path layer that we created is called logo outlines. Copy and paste that into your main comp with command or control C and command or control V. So we need to line it up into the 1080p composition. And to do this, we can use the grid to be properly precise. And we can also toggle the grid on or off throughout the entire logo animation. And the shortcut is command or control and apostrophe on your keyboard. Also, of course, it's here in the drop down menu. So in today's video, we're just going to add some subtle animation and also some shape morphing so the logo ends up in the resting and finished position. And so as you can see on screen, we do have a few different paths that make up the logo. There are the main shapes, each of the eyes, the horn on the ball, and of course also the text objects. It's important to know the difference between these different shapes when you start animating. A lot of the workflow in After Effects works the same as in Illustrator, and you can drag and move around points and paths as you would do in AI. And this is one of the upshots of using Adobe Creative Suite or you know any kind of Adobe software, because the workflow is pretty much the same throughout. Now keyframes are essential to animating anything, and you're going to be using them a whole lot. We create a keyframe that acts as the B position and this is going to be the final logo shape position at the end of the animation. And then we move back in the timeline by dragging the playhead to position A with a different keyframe. Here is the button you press to add them and you can easily move between keyframes and to do that, you click the arrows next to the diamond. This offers better precision and it's good for dealing with multiple different keyframes. The clock watch icon is where you add the first ones and this simply means that we're allowing this property to be animated using keyframes. Clicking this also creates the first keyframe. When the clock watch is blue, that means the keyframing is activated and you should see the keyframe on the timeline. So we use the diamonds to add the second keyframe for each path and we would do this to add subsequent keyframes if we were to add more. When animating and editing a specific part, we work on a linear line right here and whatever the path is, we will animate and work with specific parts of the logo. If position B is the last keyframe and where the logo finishes, I'm dragging the timeline back to the first keyframe to start the edits to the animation. And to edit, we need to use the arrow tool found here. Remember the playhead in the timeline needs to be on the relevant keyframe or an additional keyframe will automatically be added when you start moving points around. This is where using the small arrows by the keyframe diamonds are useful to ensure you are in the correct keyframe and therefore the correct frame. So now it's just a case of making edits to the logo and dragging the playhead between the keyframes to see how the animation operates. 
when you animate a logo, it's a good idea to understand the background of the client and their industry. And so, for example, this logo is for a stock market trading company. And so we can add some movement in the bull and the bear figures, but also we can have the rise in bars actually rising. You want to make the animations relevant to the logo is what I'm trying to say. And it is going to take some getting used to like with any kind of software out there. And this is a case of playing around with things until you have the animation correct in your opinion. The animation on the heads of the animals is done in a way so that they're pushing outwards from the main shape, as well as both of the eyes. And the movements are quite subtle, but yet effective. A neat trick in After Effects is to quickly show all the keyframes affecting one layer and to do this you hit U with that layer selected. This gives some more organisation to the panel and it makes it more clean and just easier to manage. Highlighting the relevant keyframes will now go to Animation, Keyframe Assistant and Easy Ease. What this does is it creates a nice ease out between keyframes as opposed to having everything moving at a constant speed. Think about it in real life, everything accelerates and de-accelerates, so you want things to not come to an abrupt stop. So you can click this graph icon to see what has been done, and you'll see that each keyframe has these handles dragging them inwards, and we can create an even stronger ease-in or ease-out effect. So the best thing to do with the graph editor is to play around and see what it can do to your animation. A lot of it can be trial and error, and over time this will become more natural, but well-timed movements between keyframes can really elevate the finished product. So with that simple motion finished, we can then move on to some of the text. As we're only going to be adding a very simple motion to the text, we're going to convert these to shapes as we do with the logo, and then copy them into our composition. So I'm going to show you how I animate one letter without having to show you every single letter. Select the correct letter, and then set up the keyframes and the timeline. I'm going to then adjust the position on the Y axis here, so the letter starts lower than usual. Dragging the playhead or pressing spacebar shows how the edit works. Then I can lower the opacity at the start of the animation, so the text fades in. Again working with keyframes, this will become more natural with time and I think I should make an entire video for beginners actually. Playing back the animation, it's starting to look pretty decent, and we're going to add some more smoothing effects later, but now I want to add a fade up on the bottom logo type. So again, make sure to select the right layer, in this case the lower text, and then set up the keyframes. I want the end result to be 100% opacity, and then to start at 0% opacity. And to make sure this affects every letter on the logo type below, I'm going to add keyframes like so to each letter. So that looks pretty good and we are getting there, but let's add some effects that will really set off the animation. We're going to want to have the main logo on its own pre-comp. And you do this by right clicking and then going to pre-compose. This then allows us to add additional animation properties to this already animated logo. We're going to be having this shape fall and rotate downwards into place, and we're doing this by keyframing the scale and rotation properties in the pre-comp. Again, we will use the graphs to really refine the movements of this animation. And also we're going to keyframe the opacity of the pre-comp so that it does fade in. Lots of fades and lots of easing in in this logo animation, but it does, does look effective. We also again want to make use of the easy ease effect that makes everything that much more fluid and smooth. And to add a bit of scope to our motion, let's check this wireframe cube on the pre-comp layer. This allows us to move the layer in 3D spaces as opposed to just X and Y axis. And we're going to use this to add some rotation towards the camera. This basically allows the animation to function in a 3D space more so than usual. 
We're coming close to the finished products, but next we're going to search in the effects panel and add a CC twister. And again, this will add more three dimensional attributes to the logo. We can add keyframes to the effects completion to see the effect fully. You will see this gives the logo a kind of ripple effect as it comes in and lands in the final position. So remember, do let me know if you want a beginner's basic style video, as this might be too heavy for some of you. And the final effect, we shall add a CC light sweep. Light sweeps are used a lot in logo animations, as it's a good way to draw the eye to the form of the logo. And we might want to play around with a few settings to get the light effects that we want, and then animate the center parameter so that it moves across the logo. This is quite a cliche effect, but I think it's something you need to be aware of, and so I'm throwing it into this animation. And so finally, it's time to add a motion blur to the logo animation, and we can do that by toggling this button here with the three discs. Motion blurs can be a real easy way to add some professionalism to animations. After Effects motion blurs are actually pretty great for such an automated tool. And of course, we can change the background to whatever we'd like in the composition settings. And that's pretty much it. You're ready to export your logo animation. That was something a bit different today. And I hope you did learn something new about animating logos or pretty much anything in After Effects. If you want to see more creative tutorials or just graphic design videos in general, do click one on screen right now. And of course, subscribe for future graphic design content. And until next time, guys, design your future today. Peace.